Hello everyone, in today's video I will teach you how to perform a basic stress and strain analysis in Fusion 360. We are going to use a finite element analysis to compute stresses and strains. And in order to explain you basic principles of finite element analysis, I have created a simple geometry that you can see over here. So this side over here, or better to say, this uh, surface or this uh, cylindrical sur surface over here is constrained. So I'm assuming that uh, the fixed constraints are applied over here. On the other hand, I assume that there is a force, a normal force, acting at the circle that you can see over here. And as the result, you will, you will obtain something that looks like this. So over here we can basically see a stress distribution where this color here basically light blue color is a zero stress and uh, dark, uh, dark uh, green or green color is the maximum stress. Also you can see the deformation or displacements or strain you can see how this element will deform and of course you have you can also see the maximum reaction forces then you can see a safety factor and etc okay so let us start from scratch the first step is of course to define the geometry so we click on create sketch and we select this plane this plane a zx plane okay now we are in the ZX plane and the first step is to define the circles. So let's define two circles. Let's say this would be the outer one and let's define the inner one. The dimensions do not matter, okay? And let us define two lines. Let's say starting from here until here and let's finish the line with this line and pre pre press escape the next step is to mirror these two lines however to perform the mirror operation we need to define an additional line so let us define a line starting from here and ending here okay and the next step is of course to perform the mirror operation so we click over here on mirror we expand the mirror panel and we select these two lines as objects that we want to mirror and then we need to select the mirror line so we're going to select this line and let's pr press enter so this is our mirrored object and let's erase this line since we don't we do not need it the next step is to trim the line segments that we don't need so I'm going to click on modify and I'm going to click on trim. So this line segment, we don't need this line segment. Okay. This line segment, we don't need it. And this one, this one, and finally this one. Now our 2D sketch is finished and I'm going to click over here to finish the sketch. Okay. So this is our sketch in three dimensions. The next step is of course to extrude. So I'm going to click over here on extrude. I'm going to select this area over here and I'm going to simply specify the extrusion height. So let's say you can select even 20 millimeters or let's say 10 for example in this case. And voila, here, here's our geometry. You can rotate by clicking over here and you can see our geometry. It took us basically two minutes to define this. Okay, so let us define our finite element study. We click over here and from the menu we will select simulation. Now, over here, since we are computing <coughs> static stress, we are going to select this option over here and we are going to click on create study. Okay, so our study is being created. This is an empty template and we, we need to adjust the parameters. 
The first step is to choose material. So we click on material, double click, and you can see over here that basically Fusion 360 automatically selected steel as the material. We don't want to play with material properties, so we're just going to click on OK. Perfect. Now our material is defined. If you want to choose some other material, you can go over here, click, and select uh, other material, for example, aluminum or any other type of uh, standard materials uh, used in mechanical engineering. That's your own selection. Or you can even define your own material. The next step is to define the force. So let us expand this menu. And under this, here under the menu loads, we're going to do right click and we're going to select structural loads. And now here we have several options. We have force, pressure, moment. We're going to select force. And here we're going to select the target. And let us select this surface as a target. And here we can specify the force. Let's say we're going to apply 5,000 newtons and you can click on OK. Now you can change the force uh, properties by clicking over here and basically changing uh, changing uh, type, target, direction, type, etc. So let's flip direction. Okay, and what you can see over here basically is that the force of 5,000 newtons is applied on this surface. That is, there are a bunch of these small arrows over here. However, the resultant of these forces is equal to 5,000 newtons. In the second part of this video, I will show you how to constrain this force such that it acts on a certain region. For the time being, let us click on OK. And the next step is to define the constraints. So if you do the right click on constraints, we can click on structural constraints. And again, from this menu, we can say, we can select fixed, pin, frictionless, prescribed displacement, etc. And here we can select the target. So I'm going to select this face over here to be a target. So what I'm assuming, I'm assuming that all the points belonging to this cylinder are not moving. That is their constraint, they're fixed. And let us click on OK. And finally, let us define the mesh. If you click on mesh, and if you click on this uh, pencil over here, we will obtain the menu. And let us decrease the mesh size such that we have, let's say, 5% mesh. And you can simply click on generate mesh. So let us see our mesh. It's going to take a while. Okay, so this is our mesh. Maybe for this particular case, we would need a little bit denser mesh. So you can do that by selecting here. Um, and then you have this uh, warning. So let us not push our memory consumption too much. And let's do generate mesh. Okay, so here is our mesh. So we have defined material, we have defined forces and constraints and finally mesh. So these are the four steps that almost any finite element study need to have. Okay, so let us perform the study. We do the right click on results and first we are going to pre-check our study. So it's always a good practice to do preliminary checks in order to make sure that everything is properly defined. So Fusion 360 didn't detect any problem. So that's very good. That's encouraging. And again, we do the right click and we click on solve. And here we are just going to select the standard options and we click on solve. Okay, so it's going to take a while, maybe a minute or 30 seconds to compute stresses and strains. I'm using a computer that's basically four years old, a laptop computer. However, if you have a more complicated study or more complex geometry, you will definitely, definitely need a powerful computer. 
Okay, let's click on close. And here I'm going to select stress. So what you can see here is our stress distribution. And in this particular case, these are von Mises stresses. So I'm going to select normal stresses. That is, the stress is normal to this surface over here. And you can see how the stress stresses are distributed. What we can see over here is the stress concentrations, which is expected. And we can also see the displacement but by clicking over here. So this is how our, st our structure will dis displace. The maximum displacement is basically 0 0.021 millimeters. Okay, so let us make this study a little bit more realistic. So the first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my force. So if I click over here, I'm going to select a force to be defined as vectors. And here you can see that you have this nice option called limit target. And if I click over here, you can clearly see this circle over here, right? So this circle or the area that it uh, defines is basically the area of the force. That is the force is acting on this area. So I'm going to decrease the radius. Let's say I'm going to select two millimeters or let's say even one millimeter, 1 1.5. Let's say, okay, now by doing this, I told to Fusion 360, okay, my force is not anymore acting on this surface. It's constrained to act inside of the area of this circle. Okay, so what you can see over here, you can see that now the results are out of date. So we need to update the results. Again, let's do the pre-check. Everything looks perfect, and let's basically click on solve and solve one study. And let's see what happens. Again, it's going to take maybe 30 seconds, maybe even more since now the force is a little bit more concentrated okay close here are the results let's click on stress let's see what happens and we can clearly see over here that we have a stress concentration over here right so the stress distribution changed a little bit and we have a huge amount of stress acting over here so let us a little bit change this radius over here. We can basically change the radius. Let us choose, let's say, three millimeters and let's see what, hap what will happen. And again, we click on results, right click, pre-check, OK, and then we click on solve. And let's see the results. Okay, close. And let's click on stresses and we can see again, we have a nice stress distribution over here. Stress becomes more and more uniform as we move away from the action plane of the force or when we move away from the action point of the force when we move more toward the inside of the material we can see that the stress distribution becomes more and more uniform and this is very well known fact in uh, static stress analysis and finally I would like to explain you how to use an amazing tool for visualizing stress distribution so if you click over here on inspect there is this option create slice plane okay and here let us select this plane and what we can do right now we can simply translate this plane and we can obtain the stress distribution we are basically slicing this element this object and we can see internal basically stresses 
and we can see internal force distribution. Very cool option if you want to visualize the stress. Of course, you can select other planes and even uh, you can basically, if you click over here, there is, a, there is an option create point probe or create surface probe where you can basically probe your stresses, right? You can probe your stresses, you can see the average, for example, stress or you can see the stress at certain points. And of course, there are other, other options, create surface probe, create point probe, reactions, let's see, you can also define the reaction forces, etc. Okay, I hope that you like this video. If you like this video, if you find these videos useful, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.